In Asian markets, these were called the faster, but this is not very faster at all. Um, and under the hood, yeah, there it is. Hey, Steve Miani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts. Anybody remember the Chevy Love pickup truck from 1972 through 1983? Well, this is the Chevy Love's reality, the Isuzu Pup. Now, here's the thing. These Isuzu pickup trucks clearly were made in Japan. And in European and Asian markets, these were called the Isuzu Faster. Crazy but true. They're not that fast. I'd like to get one of those emblems, faster, put on anything. It'll make it faster here in the States. But with that said, these things were imported by Chevrolet, again from 1972 through 1983, and to avoid a tax on imported pickup trucks, which paid more than imported utility vehicles, light trucks, these came to the United States with the beds not installed. So they came to the port in Los Angeles or Baltimore, or wherever it would have been, the bed would have been installed at a depot right there near the dock, and then it would be shipped to the dealership. Now, for the second generation, 1980 through 1988, if you see it right here, similar to the first gen Chevy Love, but this one being an Isuzu tells us something. After 1983, when Chevrolet introduced its S10 for 1982, they did sell the Love and the S10 side by side. But after 83, Chevrolet set Isuzu free and Isuzu could then sell the pickup truck here without any restrictions on marketing. And there we got the Love or the, the Pup. Now Pup, of course, the way they spell it here with the sort of the little hyphen of the contraction, Isuzu Pickup Pup. It's cute. It's a pup. It's a pickup. Get it? Little play on words. Sort of like Love, which stood for a light utility vehicle. It was spelled L-U-V. Kind of interesting. And speaking of love, this is a 1983 Chevy Trucks catalog right here. And we can see the whole new lineup for 83. Here's the uh, the Blazer, the S10 pickup, the C10s, the Laser. And way in the back there, hiding as if they don't want you to see it, is the love, or the, the love right there. And in fact, the love was not getting love. It was in the last page of the catalog. There we see it right there. And of course, 83 was the final year for the love because the S10 killed it. And of course, the S10 is these puppies right here, which were pretty much a nice copy of the uh, the classic Japanese mini pickup, Toyota, Datsun, Isuzu, etc. But Chevrolet, you know, made it American. They're heavier, they're a little better. Uh, but again, after the uh, S10 was launched, love wasn't needed. And of course, that set the Isuzu dealers free to market these things as they chose. Now, again, in Asian markets, these were called the faster, but this is not very faster at all. Um, and under the hood, yeah, there it is. The 1.9 liter single overhead cam inline four banger, no V8s, no six cylinders. There was a diesel possibility, but the vast majority of these things had this engine right here, which had a carburetor, but look at all the smog stuff. The, uh, the emissions pump here, all the vacuum lines. Uh, and again, the carburetor was sealed. How do we know that? Well, up here it says, this is the, uh, the emissions control data for the uh, Isuzu. And it says here, idle mixture screw is preset and sealed at factory. Fast idle speed is also preset. Provision for adjustment during tune-up is not provided. In other words, there are plugs and the screws that you normally see on a carburetor, no go. Because the calibrations for these things for the cleanest tailpipe emissions were done at the factory and they didn't trust anybody to mess with it and make it dirtier or cleaner, you never know. But again, this is very basic under the hood. And, and again, just, you know, making one part too many jobs, the inner fender is also the support for where the jack would have gone right in here is the wing nut would have sat right in this spot here. Uh, the uh, inner fender here also doubles as the battery tray. The battery would live right here. Here's the hold down for it there. This one does have air conditioning, kind of uncommon. There's the clutch rotating. Uh, there's the, the little pulley right there that would be activated by the electric solenoid. So air conditioning on this one, uh, but otherwise pretty austere. And that includes the grill, which on this would have been sort of a silver plastic, which has been degraded by the sun. This would have been silver. The front bumper is painted black. You paid extra for the bright bumper. So this one, a very, very austere example of the breed. This probably would have been a price leader. The air conditioning is a little weird, but with that said, steel wheels, little hubcaps, you could get optional styled steel wheels on these things, but again, the poverty caps with the Isuzu logo here in the back right there, kind of cool. That's the Isuzu crest in the middle of the poverty cap on the back right here. And leaf springs at the rear of these things, full frame construction, you know, in other words, typical uh, Japanese mini truck. The bed has double wall, actually single wall right there for lightweight. So in other words, this is the 
inner side of the outer face. So if you take that engine block, throw it in here, you're going to dent your bed from the inside out. But again, these had to be light, and that was the name of the game. Fuel economy and value for dollars. Inside, there it is. Four-speed manual transmission, no overdrive. There was a five-speed overdrive, which was possible for extra money. Uh, again, the austere basic interior, split bench front seat, and rubber floor mats. Look at that. No carpeting in this one here. Manual windows, of course, and uh, no tachometer. And under the left-hand side of the dash, to the left of the steering wheel, this little device right here. This is the wiper delay. This is actually a dealer add-on, a very inexpensive way to have uh, the wipers have a delay feature. And it wasn't even baked into the truck. It was an add-on, which probably was done at the dealer level. Interesting stuff. But again, just the austerity. Now, the speedometer on this thing goes to 85 miles per hour. And that takes us back to... 1976 when Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon, enacted the 55 mile per hour speed limit on interstates and state funded roads. And that ran through 1986 when Ronald Reagan undid it and moved it up to 65 miles per hour. And apparently the idea was that they would save 1% in fuel usage by going to 55 miles per hour for all vehicles. But what it really did was made about 85% of the public ignore it. In fact, studies were done in 1986 that said 85% of all drivers ignored the 55 mile per hour thing. But I remember as a kid riding along in cars and coming up to a bunch of cars going 55 and up ahead was a Massachusetts State Police cruiser going 55, the pace car. You, cross, you pass that cruiser, you get a $400 fine. So it was kind of a way for the states to make a little bit of money, probably, who knows, and maybe save some fuel. But with that said, 1% was the savings that was realized by going from 70 miles an hour to 55. So in 1986, President Reagan brought it back up to 65 miles per hour. But again, the 85 mile per hour speedometers in these things was a psychological oh, lever to, uh, to get people to slow down and save fuel. Did it work? I don't know. But with that said, that's the story of this 1986 Isuzu Pup. Not a Chevy Love, uh, but they get love today. I mean, this thing here, if it was an Arizona vehicle without these holes, would be pretty cool. And it's so pure and unmolested and original paint. This thing, I think, would find a buyer, but it here in Massachusetts just has the cancer. I hate to say it. It's kind of, it's savable, no doubt. But sometimes when you see something like this up here, the frame isn't any better. So who can say? But it's here at Burnson Auto Reckon. Come and get it if you want. We'll be back tomorrow with more Junkyard Crawl.